Security Concepts, Module 2.2, Grade 12, IT Theory for the IEB. Encryption is a way of scrambling data into a new format using a specific set of rules or an algorithm. The rules can also be referred to as a key. And the rules are mathematical rules which are used to change data into a totally different format that cannot be understood. Why is encryption used? Well, having your data stolen is horrible. Say you were busy shopping online, you, handed it, you put in your um, credit card details, but then in the days that follow, you notice data or money coming off your account. And you would know that somebody's stolen your digital data. Our computers are most vulnerable when they're communicating. And we're always connected to the internet, so it's a problem that we're actually always vulnerable. There are two places where two ways that your computer that your data can be stolen. The one is when your communications are intercepted. In other words, somebody can eavesdrop on the line where you are sending data and somehow they interpret the data and they can steal all sorts of important information from you. The other is if your computer gets infected by malware, which could be spyware or viruses or anything other thing that could harm your computer. Local encryption is when your files in your personal storage on your device are encrypted using special software. Remember that your storage is your hard drive or any other device that you save um, information on. So encryption can be done on the whole hard drive so that everything on the hard drive is encrypted or it can be done on individual files. Automatic encryption happens in all sorts of places that you are not aware of. It's built into some hardware devices and it's also built into various types of hard software. In the photos at the bottom, the, on the left hand side, the photo has been encrypted to what looks like a strange grid on the right hand side is the encrypted photo, which nobody would be able to interpret if they just saw it. And these are the places where automatic encryption happens. DRM or digital rights management is software that is used to protect intellectual properties like digital books or movies or games. When an ATM transfers data to, an, and the, the, to the bank and gets data back, that is encrypted. Internet browsers, with, normally on a normal website, you will just see HTTP in the URL. If you see an S there, like HTTPS, you will know that there is secure um, encryption happening. Skype calls are also encrypted and online storage services like Dropbox or any cloud storage is usually encrypted. Private key encryption is one way that data can be encrypted. There's only one single secret key which is used. Remember the key means the mathematical rules for encrypting the data. So both the encryption and the decryption use the same key in this instance. The the key has to somehow get from the sender to the recipient so the recipient can decrypt it. So it's traveling along the same channel that the, 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 the ciphertext or encrypted data is traveling and this makes this method not very secure. In public key encryption, there are two separate keys which are used. Key one is a private key, which is never sent over the channel and key two is a public key. So suppose you want to send John an encrypted message. You, John will send you his public key, you get it from him. You use the public key to encrypt the message. And then you send the message to John, the encrypted one. John then has his own private key, which he never sent you, and only that key can open up the message. The public key cannot open it. So he uses his private key to decrypt the message. So this is a very secure way because anyone eavesdropping on the channel would never get the private key and therefore not be able to open the message. SSL is a way of establishing a secure link between the client and the server. SSL 
is done using public key encryption, which is the one we just spoke about with the two keys. Let's talk about some specifics about SSL. SSL uses two important um, concepts which you need to learn. The one is a digital signature and the other one is a digital certificate. So a digital signature is like your signature. When you sign, you used to sign checks, we don't use checks anymore, but when you sign a letter it authenticates that letter. It tells that, that that letter is yours. Nobody has the same signature as you. Anybody seeing that signature who knows you will know that you have signed that letter and that you're happy with whatever is in the contents of that letter. So a digital signature is actually a mathematical scheme or a digital code and it belongs to one company or one website. That signature tells us that this, whatever is happening on the internet, is okay with that company or website. And the, that mathematical scheme is created by someone called a certifying authority. This is a company who specializes in making the internet secure. They, also, they create digital signatures and digital certificates. A digital certificate is an electronic document and it contains your digital signature and it also contains the public key. It's issued by this, that third party, the certificate authority we just spoke about, which is a company which their job is to make digital certificates. But before the CA or the Certificate Authority issues the digital certificate, they will come and check you out. Is your business really who you say you are on the internet? And your website, which is at your IP address, which is specified, is it actually a true website? Does it really reflect a true organization which actually exists, which does the business they say they do? And they will also make sure that you have a public key which has not, have, has not expired. So here is an actual digital certificate issued by THOUGHT, T-H-A-W-T-E. And it was the, there's the name in the middle there. There's the name of the organization, CompuTicket, their domain, the country. It's valid and the dates from and to which it was it's valid and then um, on the right is more details. So on the certificates the details would be the owner's public key and name, the expiry date, the name of the issuer which is the certificate authority, the serial number of the digital certificate and the digital signature of the issuer. So the two parties communicate, agree to trust the certifi certifi certifying authority. Whenever you're on a web browser, your web browser and the web server agree. Just out of interest, here is some information about Mark Shuttleworth, who was someone who, made, who created a company which was a certificate authority in South Africa. His interest in technology began as a child when he started playing computer games, and this peaked as a student with the advent of the internet. It was when studying for a business science degree in finance that he began investigating the impact of the internet. In 1999, in his final year of study, he founded an internet consulting firm, Thought, which went on to produce the first ever full security encrypted e-commerce web server that was commercially available outside the United States. The product gained incredible international support and was recognized as the fastest growing global internet certificate authority, which creates digital certificates, when it was sold to VeriSign four years later. He became a billionaire overnight, and instead of pocketing his wealth, he invested millions into education, venture capital, and open source operating systems. Now a philanthropist, Shuttleworth is dedicated to improve access to quality education in South Africa.